Okay, welcome back. So last time we talked about a problem of uh, combinations with restrictions of counting the number of 0 1 sequences which have uh, no two successive ones and we found, so we called that sequence f of n, so it is the number of 0 1 sequences of length n with no successive ones and we tabulated the first few values of f of n, so here is what we got, so here is n and here are the various values of f of n, so if n is 1, it is 2, and so on, okay. So, and the rule for forming the next value of f is to just take the sum of the two preceding values, okay. And the sequence here 2, 3, 5, 8 and so on is actually, well it is almost uh, the famous Fibonacci sequence of numbers. So we will just briefly recall what the Fibonacci sequence is. So the Fibonacci numbers or the Fibonacci sequence are often denoted capital F of n, okay. So what is capital F of n by definition? Well, it is given by the following two pieces of information. Firstly, it has the same recurrence that we wrote out for f of n, but the initial conditions are different. So f of 1 turns out to be 1 and f of 2 is also 1, okay. So it starts at 1, 1 and then when you form the, the, the next term, it is the sum of the two preceding. So the Fibonacci sequence looks like this, n versus f n, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and so on. So this is 1, 1 followed by 2, 3, 5, 8, etc. So observe that from here on what you have are just the values of f of n, okay. So observe from this table it is clear that the the number f of n that we are counting is just f the Fibonacci number n plus 2, okay. So this is for all n at least 1. Okay, so the sequence that we we have constructed is really just the Fibonacci numbers, but starting with the third Fibonacci number, which is the number two. Okay, and so now here's uh, here's another interesting problem. Going back to our combinations with restrictions, let's count it with a somewhat you know in, in a somewhat more finer way. So let us do the following, let us not just look for the number of 0, 1 sequences of length n with no successive ones, let us also impose a further condition. So find the number of 0, 1 sequences of length n with no successive ones that so far it is the same condition, but let us impose one further condition that it contains containing exactly k 1s, okay. So we impose, we have a further parameter k and we now want our sequence to have length n and also it should have exactly k 1s, okay. So well if it has k 1s what does it mean? Of course it means that the rest of the entries are zeros and n minus k zeros. Okay, so let's give this number a name. So this this number here, let's call it uh, maybe instead of just f of n, it has an additional parameter k, right? So there is, so maybe we shouldn't even call it small f. So let's call it uh, g h h of n comma k. Okay, so there are two parameters n and k and the value of course will depend on both of them. Okay. So let us try and do this, this computation, let us find the number of sequences. Now what is it that we need to do? So this problem is actually somewhat simpler than trying to do the, the full problem, the original problem in the following sense. So we know already the, the profile of our string, we know how many zeros and how many ones it contains. So observe our string has n minus k 0, so let us write down the zeros first. 
So, here is the string in which I have, I have not yet written the ones. So, observe I have n minus k zeros. And now let us worry about what the where the ones can occur, right. So, what we know is that the ones cannot occur in successive positions, right. So, which means that anytime there is a one, then what you need to have right after it is a zero, right. So, if you now ask where can the ones be positioned in amongst the zeros. So, just for the moment imagine that there are gaps between the zeros. So, between each successive pair of zeros, imagine there is a gap. Now, the ones can occupy positions in these gaps, right. Where can the ones live? Well, having a 1 here is okay, or having a 1 here is fine, here is okay. Now, what you cannot have is to have two ones occurring right after each other. So, in other words, you should think of there being exactly room for a single entry between two zeros, right. There, there is just a single gap there. So, here is a way of, of thinking about this string. The ones can only occupy the gaps. Okay, so, in our string the ones can only occupy the gaps. Now, observe since there are n minus k zeros, there are n minus k plus 1 gaps and so amongst these you need to pick out k gaps. So, the ones can occupy there are k ones. So, the number of choices So, the number of allowed strings is just a number of way of choosing ways of choosing k gaps from amongst these n minus k plus 1 gaps. So, what you have is the number h of n comma k is exactly given by n minus k plus 1 choose k. Okay. These are the number of ways of picking k gaps out of the total number of gaps. And so, what does this give us? Well, firstly that this problem is easier to solve. But here is another very, very interesting consequence of this. Observe that the total number of 0 1 sequences with no successive ones, well the total number of sequence each sequence must have some number of ones, it has k ones and what is k? k can be any number between 0 and n, ok. So, in fact here is the equation which says take a sequence, look at how many ones it has, the number of ones has to be something between 0 and n. So, that proves that f of n is exactly this sum, ok. So, what does that mean? It says that, so here is our conclusion, we just said that this is just the n plus second Fibonacci number. Okay, so, from our analysis here is what we have concluded that the n plus second Fibonacci number is exactly a certain sum of binomial coefficients. And so, recall that the binomial coefficients are usually arranged in uh, the, the form of Pascal's triangle. So, I have 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, and so on. And so, what we have here is just so, what it says really is the following, if you take these sort of diagonal sums, so I take 1, 2, uh, I take So, 
So, if you sort of add up these so called diagonals, what you get are just the Fibonacci numbers. So, this is 1, 1, that is a 2, this is a 3, 1, 3, 1 is a 5, 1, 4, 3 is an 8, and so on. Okay, so, you can actually obtain the Fibonacci numbers from the Pascal's triangle by summing up along these uh, diagonals in some sense. Okay, so, now here is another problem. Okay, so here is another problem, uh, it says the following, you have an interval of length n. So, imagine that you have say between 0 and n, so you have this interval and now what you want is to fill this up with blocks. By a block we mean, well there are two kinds of blocks, there are short blocks and long blocks. A short block is of length 1, so imagine that uh, say between 0 and 1. Uh, a filling like this will be a filling by a short block between say after a short block I want to fill it with a longer block. So, between 1 and 3 I have a long block. So, I could fill say with 2 short blocks and then follow it up with a long block and so on. Okay, so, imagine you had to fill up this interval between 0 and n by a, by a succe succession of short and long blocks and the question is in how many ways can this be done. Okay, so, let us give this a name, let us say the number of ways of doing this is let us say g of n. So, of course, it depends on n and so here is the here is the observation we could of course, uh, try this out for some small values of n. So, if you look at uh, let us see n, so if n is 1 what are the possible configurations you can only have a short block because well the total interval has length 1, so you can only fill it with a short block. If n is 2 you have an interval of length 2 which you can either fill with 2 short blocks or with a, a single long block. Similarly, if n is 3 you can either have 3 short blocks or a short block followed by a long block or a long block followed by a short block. Okay. So, well what are these numbers? The total number g of n in this case 1, in this case 2, in this case it is the 3 and so on. Okay. So, I am not yet, I am not really going to write out the, the remaining values. Now, here is the interesting observation. So, if you do this, so if you sort of look at what happens for the next few values, here is what you will find that it actually gives you back the same Fibonacci sequence. Okay. So, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8 and so on. So, here again there is an appearance of the, the Fibonacci sequence. And what we would like to do, well to try and solve this problem, you could try and proceed the same way, try and show that it has the same recurrence relation and so on and so forth. But I want to use this to demonstrate uh, a certain form of proof called the, the proof by bijections. So, here is the claim that we will now prove that this number g of n is the same as, so here is our claim. Let us prove that g of n is actually the same as uh, let us call it f of n minus 1. Okay, this is at least for n at least 2. Remember f counts the number of 0 1 um, words strings of uh, length n with zeros and 1s which do not have two successive ones. So, let us prove that the number of uh, you know short and long fillings is in fact the same as number of 0 1 strings. Okay. 
and I will sort of do this by example. So, let us take the case n equals 4 for which we have the following short and long strings or maybe we will start with n equals 3. Uh, imagine so, let us see n equals uh, 4 has 5. So, let us do n equals 4. So, I, I have a total interval of length 4. So, I have 4 short strings maybe I have 2 short and a long string. I have a short long short, I have long short short or I have 2 longs. Okay. So, this is, these are all the ways in which I can make up a total length 4 using just short and long strings. Now, this is this number the number of such configurations is exactly counted by so I am going to take n equals 4. So, the number of allowed configurations of shorts and longs is counted by g of n. Okay. So, g of n is 5, g of 4 is 5 here. On the other side, I am going to write out 0 1 sequences. Okay. So, what I what I want is the following, I am going to write out 0 1 sequences and these are 0 1 sequences. So, these are short long sequences and on the other side, I am going to write 0 1 sequences and but then I am going to write it for n equals 3 or uh, yeah, I am going to write it for n equals 3. So, what are the allowed 0 1 sequences for n equals 3? Well, that is all 3 0, 0, 1, 0, uh, let us see 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1. So, there are 5 of them right and this is really what I am going to prove that the number of short long sequences is the same as the number of 0, 1 sequences with one smaller length. So, how do we do this? So, what is the proof by bijection? What you need to do is to give a recipe which to each of these sequences should map something in the in the other set okay and a recipe which should work for all values of n not just for some specific value so here's the uh, sort of here's the algorithm so let's do this by going via an intermediary so i'll define the following map to each sequence of short and long let's do the following wherever you see a short so replace s by a 0 and wherever you see a long sequence you replace it by 1 0 Okay, so, think of it as a code wherever there is a short you replace it just by a 0 and a long by a 1 0. So, if I do this what do I get? So, here is my code function. So, short becomes all shorts are all zeros. short short long short short long uh, short long short long means 1 0 short short and 2 longs is 1 0 1 0. Okay. So, what I have done is via this encoding function I have converted the string of shorts and longs into a string of zeros and ones, but observe I have a string which is of length 4 now. So, that is the reason I said this is an intermediary step. What I now have is strings of length 4, but here is the key observation all of these strings observe will always have to end with a 0. Okay. I am not going to get all possible strings here because all of them are forced to end with a 0. And why is that? Because if I see a short, I am going to put a 0. If I see a short in the end, I will put a 0. And if I put a, see a long, I am going to put a 1 0 anyway. right? So, what I am going to get is always a 0 at the end. So, what I do is I just delete that 0. After all, I know all of them are 0. So, let me get rid of all those zeros. Okay? So, here is the recipe. You first encode this via zeros and 1s in that manner and then you get rid of all the uh, zeros at the end. By doing this, what you get is exactly a map here. So, I am going to send SSSS to 3 zeros, SSL will go to 0, 0, 001 and so on and so forth. Okay. So, what I have is actually a, 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 a bijection between these two sets, a map which is uh, a one to one correspondence. Each thing here maps to a single thing there and everything there comes from is mapped to by something from here. Okay. And so, check that this in fact works in general. So, check this always works no matter what my n is. Okay. So, this methodology of proof is often what is called a bijective proof. Okay. So, these are often uh, very difficult to construct. So, nice bijections are are rather difficult to construct in general, but when they exist there they often give very illuminating proofs of why two, two numbers must actually be equal. Okay? 